we are more or less pushed out many uh, Western countries, including US, uh, from Niger, from Mali, uh, from Burkina Faso, from, from other countries. And this will cause problems for the future if we don't act. So we are thinking about an integrated approach to step up our efforts in Africa. Uh, and especially this approach will be that we will uh, support them in a way that they ask for instead of bringing them good like we did in the past. So we're working hard on that one. But the reality at the moment is we lost ground. We saw there are more and more actors active in Africa. Uh, and I mentioned already migration, but uh, it also means that when we are not present there, that it will be more difficult to have access to raw materials. After hitting several resets, trying to restore historic um, treasures to former colonies, downsizing military presence and striking new ties elsewhere on the continent, France's Africa strategy seems at an impasse, particularly in Francophone countries. You would remember um, that at some point France troops were all over Africa, thousands from the west to the east of Africa, all in the name of counter-terrorism. But coups um, in half a dozen of former French colonies in West and Central Africa over three years, including two in Niger and Gabon, sparked soul searching about what exactly went wrong and how, if possible, to put long-standing relations and interests back on track, uh, on track. But it was a bit too late for those questions and those strategies because France was already facing increasing opposition from local governments over its continued military presence in several of its former colonies and was forced to withdraw hundreds of troops from Mali, Central African Republic and Burkina Faso. By 2022 and 2023, France had still 5,000 soldiers stationed on various bases throughout the continent. But the economic, political and environmental crises that Sahelians um, face are immense because of France. But as protesters have made it clear, many people want to face those crises without France's soldiers. And I guess this is what it has come to, a hundred troops in some parts of the continent, as those graphics and new information is showing us, a hundred troops in Gabon, um, in Central Africa, down from 350, a hundred in Senegal, another hundred in Ivory Coast, down from 600 troops, even in Chad, where it had a thousand troops, it's now left with um, 350. So as France has receded, the U.S. moved um, to fill the vacuum, but many questioned whether even that would uh, succeed on the African continent. The developments with France marked a cooling of U.S. relations as well with many African countries. But the U.S. did not care. It still doesn't. It is just forging ahead with these diplomat um, visits and talks. We even saw um, General Michael Langley's trip, which will likely reinforce um, counter-terrorism cooperation with Benin and Cote d'Ivoire, including intelligence sharing and some sort of additional military equipment. But this trip, um, trip uh, from the, the, the general um, highlights Washington's desperation. Some would even say its ambitions to rapidly secure a drone base in West Africa following its um, forced departure from Niger. And given Benin and Cote d'Ivoire's um, concerns that the Sahel's worsening security environment could dis stabilize their northern regions, the United States appears to likely come very close to those countries and secure a drone base in one of the two countries. But in all of this, one can help but think um, what the U.S. has done to counter um, terrorism in Africa. We all know that America's 20 plus years of counterterrorism support in these um, regions has not resulted in better security. Terrorist groups have risen and U.S. trained African um, officers have attempted at least nine coups, eight of which were very successful. And in that 20 years as well, reports suggest that the Pentagon knew of fundamental flaws with U.S. military operations in the Horn of Africa, but has nonetheless forged ahead and failed to address those problems. Have a listen to this. There is no useful shared conception of the conflict. The instruments of national power are not balanced which results in excessive reliance on the military instrument. There is imbalance within the military instrument as well. All the U.S. troops, all the arms and advisors given to African countries in the name of counterterrorism of the last 20 years has only resulted in more coups, more violence and more terrorism. Even a former U.S. diplomat that worked in Somalia has become one of the few um, U.S. officials to recognize that the problems that existed at the beginning of the invasion still exist even today. 
I've known these problems have persisted throughout my career with the U.S. government, but I didn't quite expect that this has been thoroughly studied by the Department of Defense, with these issues conclusively identified and yet not addressed for two decades now. And to make things worse, deaths from terrorism in Africa have skyrocketed more than 100,000 percent during the U.S. war on terror. These findings contradict claims by AFRICOM that it is preventing terrorism on the continent and promoting security and stability. And over the past few years, statistics have shown that the Sahel region on its own has experienced a significant increase in the number of terror attacks and fatalities compared to how the security of the Sahel was was before the intervention. The Sahel is now the epicenter of global terrorism, begging the question, would it have been better if France or the U.S. had not intervened?